Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I wanna to share with you my top tips for improving the speed of your workflow in Logic Pro. This is gonna be a combination of settings tweaks and keyboard shortcuts to learn that will greatly improve your efficiency with navigating around your session, creating new tracks and regions, as well as editing and moving those regions. Let's dive in. First, we're gonna tweak a few settings to give ourselves quicker access to our most used tools. First, go to the Logic Pro menu, then settings, and then general. Alternatively, you can use the keyboard shortcut command comma. Then go to the editing tab. In this window, find the pointer tool in tracks provides list, and then tick the box next to fade tool click zones and marquee tool click zones. Enabling fade tool click zones will allow you to hover your cursor over the top left or right corners of an audio region and create a fade in or fade out without having to switch to the fade tool. Marquee tool click zones means that your cursor will automatically switch to the marquee tool when it is on the bottom half of a track and it will be the normal pointer tool when it is positioned in the top half of a track. I like this setup for a few reasons. Firstly, it allows me access to my three most used tools, the pointer tool, the marquee tool, and the fade tool without having to press any extra buttons. It also keeps my secondary tool free to be set for a more project specific task. For example, if I'm mixing, I like to set the secondary tool to the gain tool for quick gain staging of audio regions. And you can access that secondary tool just by holding the command button down on your keyboard. That switches your cursor to the secondary tool. I don't like to set up a third tool on my right click though. This is an option in the editing settings menu, but I like to keep my right click free for the shortcuts menu, which for certain tasks I find just as quick if not quicker than actually using keyboard shortcuts. Adding selection based processing is a good example of this. Instead of pressing its kind of complicated keyboard shortcut, I just right click on the region and there it is right almost at the top of the shortcuts menu. So now that we've dialed in our tool settings, let's look at a few tips to help you navigate around your project faster. The most useful one by far is knowing the zoom tool keyboard shortcut. Click and hold control and option on your keyboard and your cursor automatically turns into the zoom tool. Then while continuing to hold down control and option, click and drag with your mouse to draw a box around the area you want to zoom in on. This allows you to quickly zoom in on a very specific area and allows you to get very close without having to hit the zoom in shortcut a bunch of times. But the real beauty of this shortcut is that after you've zoomed in, if you then hold control and option again and just click your mouse instead of clicking and dragging, it pops back to the previous zoom level. So good. Mastering this simple move will allow you to absolutely fly around your session. It makes you zoom in and out more quickly and more accurately. No more messing around with the other zoom shortcuts or those dreaded zoom sliders. Another great shortcut for navigating your session is moving the playhead without having to click in the ruler. If you simply hold shift and click with the pointer tool on any blank space in your timeline, the playhead will automatically snap to this position. I often find this is much easier than navigating your cursor on the ruler at the top because it's such a small little area of screen. Now let's talk about a few other must know keyboard shortcuts. A super helpful one is the repeat regions shortcut. Just select the region you want to repeat and hit command R and a duplicate of that region will be created at the end of the selected region. If you want the repeat to start in a different place on the timeline other than directly after the selected region, simply select with your marquee tool at the start of the region you want to repeat and end the marquee selection where you want that repeat to drop in, then hit Command R. To move a selected region to the playhead position, simply press the semicolon key on your keyboard. This will automatically move the start of the selected region to the playhead position, and this can be much quicker and more accurate than moving regions manually. I know we've all been frustrated a time or two by dragging regions around the timeline and trying to drop them in the right place. A feature that many people think Logic Pro doesn't have is tab to transient, but in fact it does. 
It just doesn't have anything to do with the tab key. First, make a marquee selection that starts before the transient you want to select and then hit shift and the right arrow key on your keyboard. This will snap the start of the marquee selection to the next transient. Then you can click inside the marquee selection to slice the region at that transient. A few other shortcuts worth memorizing deal with creating tracks. To quickly create a new audio track, hit Option Command A. To create a new software instrument track, hit Option Command S. To duplicate a track, select its track header and hit Command D. To duplicate a track and its regions, option click on the track header and drag your mouse down, just like copying a region in the timeline. To create a track stack, first select the tracks you want to bust together and then hit Command Shift D. It defaults to the last type you selected, either folder or summing. So if you like me are always creating summing buses, just hit enter. This will automatically create a new bus, route all the selected tracks to that bus, create a track in the edit window for that summing bus. And if the tracks were previously routed to a bus, it will automatically route the new summing bus to this previous bus path and create a new bus path for the selected tracks. Okay, that's confusing. Effectively, it just keeps your routing unchanged so you don't have to do anything. I truly, truly love this one as it used to be so much more complicated to create these submix buses. That used to be four or five time consuming steps. Now it is just as easy as creating effects buses. Of course, there are many more useful shortcuts in Logic Pro, but these are the ones that I feel like have helped speed up my own workflow the most. But if you know some great ones that I missed, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to know them. And just before I sign off, I need to ask for a little help from you. I'm currently developing a course on Logic Pro, but I want it to be tailored to your needs. So if you have a few minutes today, click the link in the description box below and fill out my short questionnaire. It's only eight questions long. It will only take a few minutes of your time and it would really help me out with developing a course that hopefully you all will love and find super useful. With that said, I hope you found this video today helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.